everybody it's Jen again and I'm here today with a candle jar DIY over do over whatever you want to call it you may hear some meowing in the background fluff is not liking me <laughs> giving my attention <laughs> do anybody else right fluff no no she don't want to meow but anyway and you'll also hear the fan in the background because it is hotter than blazes in Tennessee right now Oh my goodness, we probably won't get cool weather till almost when everybody else gets winter. But anyway, I am going to be redoing this candle lid into this shabby, chic, kind of antique finish here. The only prep I did on this was because it was dusty and things. I'm just putting this on another candle jar <laughs> so I can paint it. But uh, I put some alcohol on it that's it and let it dry paints I'm going to be using I got these at Walmart these are chalk paints this is Waverly this one's in Maze this one's in Peacock and this one's in blue but every single line of chalk paint that I have seen has these colors in it so you can definitely find that oh and there went my phone so what I'm going to do to start out with is I'm going to get my colors on here you can see here there's colors that shine through when I distressed it. That's what my first layer is going to be. So I am going to put, now I'm going to put my light color down first. I always try to think is it light colors down first or dark colors down first? We'll just go with the light color. And I'm just kind of putting it on here in a mosaic y type pattern. Um, I want some texture and brush strokes in there just because um, I'm going to be de-stressing it later and that will help with that. But I don't want it like heaped up if that makes sense. I'm just putting it in random places on the rim of the lid I guess you call it. This paint likes to cake up a little bit but that's what it's for thing about chalk paint is there's no you don't have to do any priming or anything like that the paint's gonna stick now you do have to seal it with something which I'll show you later you could just come up and scratch it off with your finger but with a little more yellow and then I'm gonna let this layer completely dry before I go in to the second step so I'm gonna let this dry and this paint does take a little while to dry especially on this metal so I will be back when we're ready for the next step I am back and uh, it's instantly for y'all but it's been quite a while for me got other craft projects on the desk here but as you can see that layers completely dried so I don't have to worry about it muddying up and I'm going to take my pool which is this lighter blue color and let's see oh there's a bunch in the lid I'm going to use that thing shouldn't so I'm going to get a bunch of paint on my brush and then I'm going to dip my brush in water and we're going to go over it probably need some more water because I want it to cover, but I also want, as you can see, some of those under colors to come through. I'm actually going to paint the sides here. And I'm actually going to let this dry, and where it's so watery, I could use a paint drying thing, but I am just going to let it sit overnight and then we'll come back and do the last step. And we are going to be done, y'all. Very, very easy to do. But I'm going to let this dry and get to getting, and I will see y'all probably tomorrow. Okay, so it's the next evening. <laughs> it's actually after work for me. Anyway, um, and everything has dried on this one. 
I did do this and you can see those bottom layers really come out on this one I did it a little more transparent than I did on the first one but everything's nice and dry so now I'm going to distress it and I mean it's pretty just like this you could totally leave it like this but I'm going to what is that on my desk anyway <laughs> I'm going to distress a little bit because I want to give it kind of a beat up a look so you can use sandpaper I don't have any sandpaper handy at the moment and I don't feel like going outside and getting any so I'm using an old Amory board and a wet cloth to wipe the dust off and to wear it down a little bit so I'm just going to start over it I think we're good there so as you can see that's the finish on top got some good scratching on it and then I let this dry for a few minutes to get that water off and then I seal it a lot of people I've seen use polyacrylic polyurethane uh, just really anything I wanted a very flat finish but I did want a, a sealer I guess on it you know something to seal it down because you can just scratch this off until you seal it and I didn't have any uh, flat finish stuff except for old matte uh, nail nail polish or nail top coat nail polish top coat with a matte finish and that's what I used on this one and it actually worked out very well so far it didn't seem to counteract with it but let's see I'll let y'all see the finished one there you kind of see it kept it with that um, matte finish but that's all I'm going to do with it I don't know if I'm going to maybe later I haven't decided add some type of like embellishment to the top I do stick on this is an old earring that I have took the little rings off of that looks kind of cute I got two of those I might go with that <laughs> but um, you know just any things like that I got trying to show you some ideas here I save these little things off stuff just so much fun but that is the video for today I don't think y'all need to see me put matte top coat on and let it dry I actually ended up putting two coats on but thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see y'all on the next one Bye!